These homeowners would like to shade their patio here in the backyard from the sun, but they don't want to block out their view. So rather than putting up a permanent wood or aluminum patio cover, we're going to do something a little different today. We're going to put up a retractable awning that meets all of the homeowner's needs. The awning we're installing today is by Sunesta. It's made of fabric. Joining me is Jeff Bedard. Good to see you, Jeff. Hey, Glenn. Now, Jeff, is this going to be sturdy enough to withstand weathering, let's say, strong straight line winds from a thunderstorm or even fading from the sun? Well, fading is the number one concern of homeowners, and the fabric we use today is made out of acrylic fiber. We actually dye the color into the fiber first, spin it into yarn, and then weave the yarn into the fabric you see today. As a result, we have a five-year warranty against fading. And as far as uh, thunderstorms, strong winds with uh, storm activity are concerned, it's retractable, so. Right, the beauty of the product <laughs> is like, it's like turning off your lights. At the push of a button, roll the awning up, and within less than a minute, the awning is up and secured against the house. Okay, let's get started. Now this really isn't a job for your average do-it-yourselfer because the mounting is critical. If you get that wrong, you could really do some damage to the outside of your house. Isn't that right, Jeff? That's right. Now we have an overhang here, so we're going to mount it to the soffit right out here. But if we did not have the overhang, where would we mount this? We'd mount it to the wall of the house, or in some cases we'd mount the awning up on the roof. Okay, we got the overhang, so how do we get started? Well, we want to mark the end of the awning, and in this case we want to make sure the end of the awning is six inches from the end of the house. Uh, the reason is, is that when the awning rolls out over the patio, we want to make sure the fabric is underneath the soffit, and that'll help block the sun from hitting the patio. Do we have to measure the other side as well? Uh, no, we don't, because the other end, the awning will just fall where it falls. Okay. Now, this is very critical. We have to find the studs. This is where the mounting comes in. That's right. If you don't find the studs, the lag bolts can fall out of the soffit. And then if you have a strong wind, let's say, your awning falls down and, and you could be in big trouble. That's right. Now notice that you're measuring in on the overhang. Is that critical? It is important because when the awning's rolled up, you want to and protect your fabric. So if we put the awning back here in the middle, the awning will be protected from the elements. These are our mounting brackets. We're going to use four of these for our installation. They're made of aluminum, strong stuff. What's the weight of our awning? Awning weighs 160 pounds, so it's very important to use at least four brackets for this installation. We've already made our marks. And these brackets will go right like this. That's right. Now, they're pretty far away from each other. Is there a reason for that? Yeah, you just want to evenly space the brackets out, but you want to put the brackets close enough to where the arm of the awning is going to be. And of course, we have them on the studs. All we have to do is drill our holes and screw them into place. Our brackets are all in place, nice and secure. Now it's time to put this baby up. Now, Jeff, when we extend the awning, are we going to have to put some posts out here to hold the awning in place? No, that's the beauty of the product. It's all self-contained, like you see now. No need for posts or uprights, because the awning is going to extend out over the patio right from where it's going to be mounted. Now we're ready to put our awning in place. Put it right into the brackets here. There you go, and we just bolt it in. Bolt caps in place. Now a lot of awnings come manually operated. This one is powered by electricity, but Jeff, I can't find the motor anywhere. Well, it's a common question. Uh, this awning is motorized. It's at the end of the awning here. There it is, okay. Right there, the black cap is actually the only thing you actually see. The rest of the motor is hidden inside the tube. It runs about 16 to 18 inches down inside the tube itself. And then coming out of the motor is a motor cord. There you go, so now we have to hook up our electricity. I know we have some options here. Mm -hmm. This is the most common way to operate the awning once it's motorized. This is a wall switch. Has a cover plate on it to protect it from the weather and then just a maintain rocker switch inside. Now this would normally be mounted right outside on the wall, and then later down the road, the homeowner can elect to have an electrician come back and hardwire the switch in the inside if they want. What about this one? This is a receiver. This allows the homeowner to operate the awning from inside or outside the house with the old-fashioned remote control. Wow, kind of like your garage door opener. Exactly, just like the TV, too. So if the weather's bad outside, you can just control it from the inside. Push the button and roll it up. Our homeowner opted for the remote control. Our receiver's in place power cord just needs to be plugged in 
And with this transmitter, nice and small, one push of the button, and here comes our awning. I have to mention these arms, they provide support. That's right, the arms have springs in them, and the arms are always wanting to spring out, which keeps tension on the fabric and allows the motor to turn the tube. And that also eliminates any need for uprights or posts. Now it takes about 30 seconds to extend it completely out. Let's say we had a power outage, what would we do then? Good question. Well, we'd get our handle, place it in the opening here. It's got a built-in manual override in the motor and that allows us to manually retract the awning. That is great. You guys have all the bases covered, Jeff. We tried to. It took us about two hours. It was well worth it. I enjoyed it. Thank you for all your help. Thank you. Now the cost on this installation was about $2,200. That did include labor. Add another $240 if you go with the remote control option. Now the great thing about this is, well, the homeowner. Hey, you can't control the weather, but with a retractable awning like this, one push of a button, you can take yourself from the sun into the shade in an instant.